Hello and welcome to Tensile Ground Coffee, a few minutes on ground engineering to enjoy it while having your coffee. Well, continuing on with the Ask Andrew season, uh, we're out and about again. So I printed off the very latest uh, question that we've received uh, this week. It's from Sandy, Sandy Gravel, and she asks, what is an expansive clay? So expansive, not expensive, expansive. But although having said that, did you know that uh, expansive clay causes more damage, uh, causes as a higher cost of damage, financial cost, than all the other geohazards put together. So earthquakes, landslides, sinkholes, all of that. Expansive clays have caused an insurance cost of about $12 billion uh, per year. So more than the others all put together. So although it doesn't make the news, it costs so much because expansive clays cover vast areas of land all around the globe. And they're doing their thing continuously shrinking and swelling uh, every year. So they shrink when they dry out and they swell when they uh, get wet. Now that wouldn't be a problem if they shrank and swell uniformly. So the whole ground level just went up evenly. Of course, some areas go up and down more than others. And that's due to variation in ground conditions and also variations in moisture. So under buildings and roads, you get that variation in moisture. So if you imagine uh, a, a road constructed over an expansive clay, that road surface creates a moisture barrier. So it's difficult for moisture to evaporate and it's difficult for water to get in. But at the sides where they are exposed to the atmosphere, you do get the shrinkage and swelling in the summer and winter. So that differential creates a cycle of swelling like that in a road and similar in a building. And in a road, you get a longitudinal crack created all the way along the center of the road. Rather like here at this high school uh, playground, if you look down along here, Brian, look at all these cracks right across the, uh, the playground here, because uh, I happen to know that this is on an expansive clay here. So there have been many repairs undertaken, uh, such as here, but you see that I can get my hand right in there because of the seasonal shrinkage and swelling, all these cracks just uh, open up again. So if they wanted to rebuild this, it would be a good idea to build it on some geogrid layers as well, because there's been a lot of studies, particularly uh, in Texas, showing a significant reduction of the occurrence of these longitudinal cracks in roads with the addition of geogrid during a reconstruction of the road. So that would be a good idea here. So, why do clays shrink and swell and not gravels, sands and silts? Why is it only clays? Well, it comes down to two main reasons. Number one is the size of the particles. So between all particles, there are tiny little uh, electrical uh, forces. Uh, so they're like interparticle forces that can attract particles together, but they are negligible compared to the self-weight uh, forces of the larger particles, gravel, sand, and silt. But when you get down to clay, where the particles are so small you need a scanning electron microscope to see them, those interparticle forces start to become significant. So as a clay dries, the little bit of water left creates surface tension that pulls the particles closer together. So that increases those interparticle forces more and more until you get a very hard structure. That's why clays become very hard as they dry out. And then um, as, they, uh, as the moisture increases, they then soften again. So it's due to those strong interparticle forces. But that's not the only reason they shrink and swell. There's also some clays shrink and swell more than others. So why do we get expansive clays that shrink and swell a lot and we get other clays that don't? That comes down to the mineralogy. So clay minerals are hydrated. So that means the clay particles have layers of water molecules around them that's called adsorbed water. And it's that feature that also increases the amount of shrinkage and swelling that occurs um, as, they, as they wet and they dry. Now, some clays shrink and swell more than others. Why is that? That's down to the mineralogy. So there are three main mineral types. There's uh, kaolinite that, is, that has the lowest shrink swell capacity that a kaolinite has almost pure white color. So it's used quite a lot in industry. It's used in paper making, ceramics, toothpaste. 
and in diarrhea treatments, interestingly, because if you eat a little bit, it has very good uh, water absorbency uh, characteristics, but check with your pharmacist first. Next comes Illite, that has a moderate uh, shrink swell capacity. Illite comes from uh, Illinois, that's where it was uh, first identified in the US, uh, also called mica clay. Then the champion is Montmorillonite. That's named after a charming little uh, town in central France called Montmorillon, and that's where the, the mineral was first discovered. Now, that crystal structure, the layers are not very well bound together, so there's a lot of space for adsorbed water to get in between all those crystals. So that gives it huge shrink swell potential. So that's the mineral in expansive clays that causes all this shrinkage and swelling and the, and the damage that you see uh, here. So, but it's not all bad, so there are some useful properties there. So, um, bentonitic clays contain the Montmorillonite, and they're used a lot in, um, in drilling, as a drilling mud in the, the oil industry, also as a support fluid uh, for piling and for diaphragm walls, and also for providing a, a seal. So, in um, levees, dams, wells, also as a landfill liner, uh, bentonitic clays are used quite a lot because of that property of when water goes into them, they expand, so they fill any gap and they seal, seal the gap, which is uh, their function. Okay, so there you go, uh, an overview of expansive clays and why they can be very expensive. That's all from this episode of Tensile Ground Coffee. Thanks for watching and see you next time.